Welcome to a sports news for you news update. I am your host, Thomas Fennell. Today we will be talking about NBA free agency, more specifically the Houston Rockets and what potential they have. We're also going to be digging in to a couple of other teams, but first we're going to start off with the Miami Heat going into this offseason. They said that they're going to take a shot at Carmelo Anthony. Now we look at the Knicks, the Knicks that pouring all that money into the front office and into the coaching staff. The Knicks right now, there's a lot at stake for the Knicks. Carmelo Anthony's up, Andre Bargnani, Kenyon Martin, uh, Amari Stoudemire, Cole Aldrich. They're, they're, all those guys are unrestricted. So those can also be good pickups for other teams around the league, but specifically we're going to be talking about Carmelo Anthony. Now, heading to Miami, their entire team is pretty much up for sale. Now, who can you eliminate and and who can you know who can you kind of pick and choose and see where you can save a little bit of money? We know Shane Battier is retiring. He's gone. Michael Beasley, do you really need him? I don't think he's going to bring too much to this roster. I think something that got this Heat team was they had a little bit too much depth. Uh, and Eric Spolstra definitely didn't use that correctly. And they seemed a little bit too old. They didn't look like they could keep up with the pace of the younger players of the Spurs. And so the Heat bench really needs some help. So for that, you got to be able to pick and choose who you're going to re-sign. James Jones, he's up for grabs. I think he could be a nice addition to a team like the Bucks. He can definitely score. Really, he's on the very end of this bench, but I think he could be higher up. He has that ability to play. Udonis Haslam, he's... He, the Heat fans, that is their player. They, everybody likes Udonis Haslam. He's been there from the start. He's definitely been there through the tough times. Definitely not the player that he was before. But you look at it, and he plays aggressive. He plays with heart. You know, he he could def. He's definitely a good pickup to get back here and to get back to Miami. But then you also look at. You have Birdman, Chris Anderson. Do, you know, who would you keep in that situation? And so you might want to keep Chris Anderson. But then looking into the starting lineup, do you really need Dwayne Wade? Is Dwayne Wade worth as much money as you're giving him? No. He's not he he's not been playing he's not been having those thirty point games that he used to have. He's Rarely having 20-point games. He's struggling to pass and move the ball. Really, if you if you told me that you could t trade Dwayne Wade for Carmelo Anthony, I'm going to make that trade nine times out of ten. With Carmelo Anthony, he's your spot shooter. LeBron James, you can have him bringing the ball up the court. He's able to just plug in an assist straight over to Carmelo Anthony. Chris Bosh, is he a keeper? I think so. He can still develop his game a little bit more. He's working on you know, shooting farther. He, he's almost becoming um, almost a guard. Uh, he's, he's been playing out in the corner. Uh, he's been playing a little bit of short corner. He, he's developed his mid-range game just amazingly. He's... He's a really good shooter, so that would also be a big part of that decision. I'm keeping Chris Bosh. Mario Chalmers, I like the way he handles the ball. You're still going to have Norris Cole uh, to help you out there. He's he's good till next season. But Chris Bosh, Mario Chalmers, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, you don't really need Dwayne Wade. You just don't. Uh all in all, I think he's not—he's not really the kind of player that 
you know, that this team, if you got Carmelo Anthony, he's not the kind of player that would fit this lineup. Uh, Richard Lewis, he's able to hit shots, but he's kind of an off-and-on player. In the finals, we saw him have a couple of good games, but really nothing too spectacular. So, I think if the Heat get Carmelo Anthony, they really don't need Dwayne Wade. If they do, he's going to be on a limited playing schedule, and he's just going to be there in the postseason. Now, moving on, the Houston Rockets. I like their position right now. Going into this offseason, basically, they have Chandler Parsons. He's restricted. And then you have a couple of bench players that are unrestricted that pretty much don't matter. If I'm the Houston Rockets, Carmelo Anthony is probably my first priority. And for Carmelo Anthony, Houston doesn't look so bad. The state of Texas doesn't look so bad. First of all, with Houston, you've got Dwight Howard and James Harden. James Harden, another offensive player. Carmelo Anthony can be there on defense. He can he can make up for what James Harden kind of lacks. But, you know, you've got Carmelo Anthony, a very good shooter, and he can he will be able to feed Dwight Howard. He you know Dwight Howard will be able. Dwight is already a good post presence with James Harden. I think getting Carmelo Anthony, it's going to make him an even better post player. They're going to try to double team Carmelo, and Dwight Howard is going to be there. I think that you know having another shooter on the floor, and they know that he can make buckets. That's going to create another, you know. That's going to create a lot more pressure on the opposing defense, and you spread them both out, one on each wing, and Dwight Howard's going to be there in the middle. They're going to be a hard team to defend. So Houston, now they do have Omar Ashik and Jeremy Lin. Those are very high-priced guys. They both got $15 million on them, so $30 million for both of them. Going to be kind of hard to trade both of those guys, but I think one place that they could possibly make a trade would have to be somewhere like Philadelphia. They've got a couple of guys, and, you know, that's just a start for them. You know, you got a big man in Omar. I think he could possibly and potentially play a bigger role. He's tall, and... You know, Nerlens Noel, I don't think he's going to do too much for the 76ers. So you, you might be able to pwn a couple of guys off. But I don't really think that this, you know, that that's going to be too much of a problem. Another place that I really think Carmelo Anthony has a shot at going is Chicago. Chicago has really been trying to advance and enhance their starting lineup. Next year is Chicago's dump year. Unrestricted free agents. They've got Carlos Boozer, Mike Dunleavy, and, you know, that's a lot of older talent. Uh, they've got Jimmy Butler. He's definitely played a role. Uh, this year, Nars Muhammad, I don't see him coming back. Kirk Heinrich, he can definitely handle the ball out front, but it, if anything, I think this Bulls starting lineup could do without is probably a Derrick Rose. What have you really gotten out of him? Nothing. You've had a what an MVP run and a, pl a little playoff run that didn't end in much. Derrick Rose, def I think he should be excluded from all plan making right now. You know, you should just imagine the team without Derrick Rose. You got to bring in Carmelo Anthony, some other guys that could help for this team. You know, Carlos Boozer definitely. You know, got Tosh Gibson, so pretty good on the uh, big man end. But what you're really looking for is guys, you know, in the guard position. Uh, you got Jimmy Butler. Uh, he, he's going to be restricted next year. Mike Dunleavy. He's going to be unrestricted. He's probably going to retire. So who is out here this year that could possibly help you 
next year as well as this year because also for Chicago you're looking a little bit into the future Joe Kim Noah definitely a big part of this offense he's kind of the main staple he he's the guy that you know that you're looking to feed he, earlier on in the season or I say midway he was getting assists he was moving the ball he was passing he was doing a great job so some guys that they could possibly bring in Kyle Lowry from the Raptors he's definitely a, he, he's a great shooter a very good defender he's he's an option uh, guys like Chris Douglas Roberts I would think he could be a guy he's he's good defensively not really your offensive charge however he can put up points I think he could be a very good uh, replacement for Mike Dunleavy uh, he brings that physical tone I really think that he could be a guy that's gonna step up now unrestricted this year some guys that I think you know for the Dallas Mavericks, they're kind of in a crucial spot. They've got Dirk, Vince Carter, Sean Marion, all an unrestricted free agent. They've got to get those guys back. I thought that last year, or the previous season, they had a very good playoff run. They had the Spurs down in the series. I really think that they can come back and maybe next year get deeper on into the playoffs. I like I like what they've shown from their youth and and you know their build up guys uh, their their younger guys you know and you have Monte Ellis that was a great addition for the Mavericks he's able to shoot he can handle the ball definitely good for a future for this program now another shooter out there Mike Miller he's unrestricted for the Grizzlies as well as Zach Randolph those can all be guys that can make teams a little bit better but specifically for the Rockets they have to target Carmelo Anthony and I think that that could happen James Harden, Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony and if they can re-sign Chandler Parsons those are four dominant guys that you could have on the floor all the time. I think they could. I think that that starting lineup could wreak havoc on the entire NBA, and I think that they could have a shot at possibly a title. Now they're also going to come in the way of the Miami Heat, who are definitely interested in Carmelo Anthony. But you're not going to get Carmelo Anthony as long as Dwayne Wade is there. It's not going to happen. Dwayne Wade, definitely a shooter. He likes you know, he likes to have the glamour of, of the drive and, and shooting the fancy layups and you know backing down a player and turn around, little hook shot. It's not going to work. Those are too many guys, too many egos. I think LeBron... Carmelo and Chris Bosh is going to be the next big three, and I think that they can all kind of work together. I see, I, I don't see Dwayne Wade in this picture. I think he's the extra guy that really doesn't need to be there. Let's face it, the face of this franchise is LeBron James. Carmelo Anthony would be a wonderful add on. Chris Bosh definitely developing his game as a post player also as a mid-range shooter and a deep shooter I think that could potentially be a very deadly lineup now for Chicago Joe Kim Noah you have if you can re-sign Kirk Heinrich and then you also bring in Carmelo Anthony and you have Mike Dunleavy Mike Dunleavy can shoot very well He's a deep shooter. He can make he makes a lot of shots. He's usually there for this team. He's he's had really big games where he's scored more than 30 points. And then he's had games where he doesn't even score at all. So bringing in more of a consistent shooter, Carmelo Anthony, would definitely be there every night. If you also start Mike Dunleavy, 
then you have an abundance of shooters as well as Joe Kim Noah in the paint. He's He's got some very good post moves. One of the ugliest jump shots I've ever seen, but a lot of those shots do go down. So that is also, you know, a big possibility and an opportunity for success. In this Eastern Conference, the Heat, definitely the favorite. Going into next year, I think if the Heat wind up it being Bosch, James, and Wade, then it's... I I think that the Heat could possibly get beat by a team like the Bulls if they get Carmelo Anthony. Now the Knicks, we haven't really I haven't really entertained the possibility of Carmelo staying in New York, but if he does, other guys that I think they're gonna have to get back. I think Amari Stoudemire's got to get back. He hasn't really produced the way that I think a lot of people had expected him to. Um, he he's come off the bench. He's in my mind, he's played okay. He's got the rebounds. He's able, you know, he's, he's able to put up shots and and get in the post. I like that about him. Uh, I think they've got too many big guys. Kenyon Martin. I think they stay with him uh, next year. Tyson Chandler is going to be up for grabs. I like the way Tyson has played. When Tyson runs the floor. He's easy to pass to. He's always there to get him, you know, fast break. He's running up and down in the lane. Easy points all day. J.R. Smith, I think, is a guy that they have to get out of New York. If they want this train to go anywhere, J.R. Smith does not, it cannot be on it. He can't. possible pickup uh, really for this team it's kind of hard to match people around Carmelo Anthony who could possibly be a guy that could come in and play consistent minutes uh, like from the Pacers Evan Turner he's a restricted free agent but I don't really see the Pacers re-signing him he's caused some locker room problems and he really just isn't the answer for the Pacers so they release Evan Turner, New York Knicks sign him, put him in the starting lineup. That could possibly work, Evan Turner. Not a huge shooter, but when you know when he needs to, he will shoot. And over the course of a game, he's going to get his amount of shots in. You look at J.R. Smith, he's going to get his shots in, whether Carmelo likes it or not. Evan Turner is going to get his shots in. I think that could potentially be a very good pickup. Uh... And other guys possibly, you know, talking about Patty Mills uh, bringing the ball. Patty is definitely a shooter. And when Patty is on and he can hit shots, then it's wonderful. The Knicks are, are, are going to win. But when he's not, it's going to hurt the team because he doesn't know when to stop shooting. He's going to go out there. We saw him in a limited role against, you know, or excuse me, for the Spurs. And against the Heat, he was able to go out there and do that because he was making shots. And he, he wasn't playing 30 minutes a game. He was playing about 20 minutes a game. If he if he played for the Knicks, he's playing 30, 35 minutes every night. That, that can't happen. Um, I don't think that that's going to be a very valuable pickup. Uh, really, for the Knicks, I think that they just need to find... A point guard or a guard that can get along with Carmelo Anthony. There, there's really not a whole lot that you know. There's not a whole lot of talent out there that could be, you know, that could that could really be this, you know, the main point guard for this franchise. There's a, you know, Steve Blake, he knows how to play with stars. Played with Kobe. Coming out of Golden State, that could be a possibility. Bring uh, Steve in. Also a former teammate of Derek Fisher. He played behind Derek Fisher, so 
you know, we'll see if, you know, what goes on there. Uh, Avery Bradley from Boston Celtics, that could be a possibility, although he is a restricted free agent, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Sean Livingston, he's able to move the ball. Uh, he could potentially be a, you know, a point guard starting for this Knicks team. I don't think Raymond Felton can do it any longer. Uh, he's had some off-court trouble, and he, I really think age is getting the better of him. He, you know, really, his game was driving into the lane, making the layups. He can't do that anymore. He's getting older. He's getting a little bit slower. The younger guys are starting, you know, to get a little, they've got speed on them, and they're starting to defend them a whole lot better. I think that Raymond Felton's time is kind of up in New York. So... If New York can, the, to the best of their abilities, I think they should re-sign every single player that they, you know is unrestricted. Uh, I think they could do without Cole Aldrich. Uh, if you get Bargnani, Tyson Chandler and Andrea Bargnani could potentially be a, a lethal big man duo. Uh, th there's a lot of potential there. Bargnani can shoot, so we... we you know, we've seen that out of out of him when he was in Toronto. That's definitely a possibility. So the Knicks definitely have a lot of work to do. And you know, the Rockets re signed Chandler Parsons. Do everything you possibly can to get Carmelo Anthony and uh, you know, there's some other guys that you could possibly look at. Um, Udonis Haslam, he he would be good coming off the bench for you. Um, he he could play along with Omar Sheik and it. Greg Oden's going to be a free agent. I don't really think that he has a whole lot. Um, he, he might go back to a smaller market team. He's just not worth a whole lot. I mean, you look at all of his injuries and. You can't really go out and say that he's, you know, that that he's a, a a valuable player because he's not. He he's barely he barely played at all in Miami. It was kind of a rehab year. He's been injured his entire career. He just doesn't have much. He he's not reliable. You can't count on him to be there every night because it, it almost looks like. He's timid. When he's going up for a rebound, he's scared that he might break an ankle, twist something, land on something wrong, and it's just too much pressure. I don't really see him being much of a, much of a success in the NBA, but we'll see what happens. Another, another place that I think is producing a lot of talent into the free agent market is the Clippers. Of course, other news, Doc Rivers, uh, not the head coach anymore, moved up higher on into the front office. But guys that they're getting, you know, guys that are in uh, free agency, Darren Collison, we saw him handle the ball extremely well against the Thunder. Uh, Glenn Davis, he could definitely be a post presence. Danny Granger, uh not scoring like he used to after the after his knee injuries. He he's not very valuable anymore. Um, Hito Turkoglu he can he can still shoot. He's got some game. Um, definitely a, a lot of talent there. Now out of L. A. Unrestricted free agents. Pal Gasol definitely probably the biggest name right there. Uh, he could possibly be a huge pickup um, anywhere. Uh, Boston, definitely, but I don't see him going there. Uh, Boston could really use just about anybody. Um, a, another guy, Boris Dayal, uh, he's probably going to stay with San Antonio. But a lot of big men on the market, 
uh, we'll see. This the, in, the new the new NBA. It kind of looks like it's going more towards the guards. The big men just don't really matter. Your big men can have a great game, and your team loses. Your big men could outscore the other team's big men by about 15 points and grab 20 more rebounds, but you still lose. It's a game of the three pointer, and you know I. I still think that the big men are valuable for what they do uh, defensively and their defensive presence as well as rebounding, but it's kind of, you know, there, there's a lot of guys up for grabs, and I think some teams might, or some teams could capitalize on this. Um, Andre Blatch out of the net, he could make a very good power forward for any team. Um, it's just that there's almost too many unknowns. Um, Luau Dang, he could potentially be a player of, of, of good caliber for any one of these teams that are looking. But Miami, Houston, and New York, those are the three teams that everybody is looking at, all because of Carmelo Anthony. I think that he could, out of anything, the only reason why he would go to Miami is because they've let Dwayne Wade go, and it's going to be Anthony, James, and Bosch. That's the only way he's going to Miami. Houston. Houston, he would go to Texas. No income tax. That's nice. Gets to play with Dwight Howard. He's always wanted to play with Dwight Howard. Very, he's, you know, he respects Dwight Howard very much. And James Harden, another shooter. He's going to be there for you. And you also have Chandler Parsons. If they can bring him back, he he can probably play a little bit smaller. Uh, if not, put him in the two. Let James Harden bring the ball up. You know, and then you could potentially have yourself a championship team, dare I say. Uh, Houston, definitely a good spot. But then he could also wind up in New York again. They're definitely going to have to do a lot of re-signing and a lot of praying. I don't really see this team doing all that well if he stays in New York. I think his best chance to win a ring would be in Houston. Uh, a lot, just a lot to be said there. Um, other guys that could possibly wind up in Houston, Dwayne Wade, although I don't see that happening. Um, guys like LeBron James, they might make a run at LeBron. I don't see LeBron leaving Miami. Not a whole lot of reason for him to go out, go out to Houston. Um, Really, I you know if, if anybody if any of the big three leaves Miami, it's going to be Dwayne Wade, and I like, I think that any number of teams could try to make a run at Chris Bosh. Uh, I really think he's going to want to stay in Miami. Uh, Ray Allen is unrestricted. I see him retiring. Just not a whole lot of value there. He he's not been shooting and playing the way that he was. Uh, just even a year ago, uh, his play has definitely declined. So, over the course of time, I think Ray Allen is done, Dwayne Wade is done, and it, it's kind of time for, for the new era to come about. And Dwight Howard is getting on up there in age. How many years does he have left? Carmelo Anthony, he's going to be hitting his mid-30s, depending on how long this contract is with the Rockets. I think that the Rockets, now is their time to make the move, and if Carmelo Anthony wants to win a championship, this is probably how it's going to be done. Um, that could potentially be a very deadly team. Now, for the Spurs re-signing, Tim Duncan, he's he stated he's probably going to come back. Uh, 
Patty Mills, you, you have to be able to tell him how much, if he goes, if New York tries to make a run at him, how much that he's going to regret it. They have to let him know that things here with San Antonio, he's not a four-quarter player. I think he, he really shines for probably about one half of the game, probably about two quarters, maybe even just one quarter. He really shines, and everybody thinks that he can go an entire game. I don't see his shooting lasting that long. Uh, I think coming out, he's he's able to shoot very well. He can handle the ball. He's able to defend, and you know that makes him valuable. Boris Dale, I, I think that the Spurs really need to re-sign him. Very good passer. Extremely good defender for his size. He was able to contain LeBron James. Very good defender. Uh, so... Out of San Antonio, three guys really need to sign. Uh, going out and getting other players, I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, you know, who, who, who are you really going to go out and look for uh, to, to try to make this team better? Not a whole lot of options. They're definitely not in the Anthony bid. Um, just not a whole lot of options trying to make that team any better than what it already is. So Houston, I think, is in for a big run this offseason. Keep up to date. We'll be talking to you soon. To all you Houston fans, I really wish I was a Rockets fan right now because things are moving in the right direction. So I thank you for listening. This has been a sports news for you news update. Have yourselves a wonderful Wednesday.